Hello and in today's STM32 programming we are going to be setting up the serial UART. Now for this project I already copied over the ISR whole file along with the GPIO files from the previous tutorials. So to set up the UART you want to go to your configurator or icon file then go to connectivity and then select which UART you are going to be working with. In this case, the STM32F103 has three UARTs available. In our case, we are going to be using UART1, so we just click that. Then for the mode, we are going to select asynchronous mode. You can see there are different interface types we can have here. Synchronous mode is grayed out because we're already using it, and you can see which GPIO are causing it to not be able to use the synchronous mode. But like I said, asynchronous mode. Now for the settings, we can take the parameter settings. Now most of this is already set up as default for us. We can change the baud rate to whatever we want to within the specification. You can refer to your data sheet what your available baud rate is for your available clock settings. The word length we have 9 bit and 8 bit available. We are going to be using 8 bit. We are going to be using no parity. The stop bit is going to be 1 and we are going to use both receive and transmit and oversampling we cannot adjust okay so for the first part we are just going to generate our project so we just click save and then we want to switch to the c perspective now this will generate you additional files namely the useart.h and the useart.c if we go look at the main.c we have a new function that is generated which is the uart init we can quickly have a look at that okay so here it defines your uart handle of a uart handle type def so this is the structure that contains all the information of the uart how you set up the uart and then it calls the init function and we have the the MSP in it which initializes the pins for UART functionality. You can see here it uses GPIO 9 and GPIO 10 input mode, alternative function mode and the GPIO is set as high speed, no pull and then we initialize the GPIO. First we need to create a new source file which is a UART underscore all dot h actually this is a dot cpp file so we just rename that dot cpp okay excellent then we create a new header file and that's going to be uart underscore whole dot h then we split the view and we go into the main view actually we need to open the uart whole dot cpp then we split the view so the first class we are going to create is uart base protected private sections okay create our constructor and we create our destructor Okay, so we need, if we go look at our main.c file, and then we just open up the UART all.c again, we need two variables to initialize the UART. So we take our whole def, which is the one, and then we are going to need a instance for the define. So we're just going to have a look what the type is of the instance. The instance is of UART type def pointer so we add a variable here for instance i'm just going to copy it from here and then we need a ur type def and ur type def is a structure so we copy that and we are going to create a pointer of it and this is going to be the hur to keep with the naming convention in the files and these two have a mirroring variable in our protected section we just name those underscores then we go to our hull.cpp we instantiate our constructor as you are told that base and then we are going to create a init function as well which is going to have void parameters and we reflect that over to our class here and then we need a private static is underscore 
init variable so that we can keep track of what is in it and we say that's a boolean and that's going to be an array and since this tutorial is only going to be using one uart we're going to say hash define uart underscore count and the count is going to be equivalent to one uppercase and we use the count macro to for the boolean now we need to define the static boolean in our C. So we take this, we just copy it over, class, empty braces, and we say false to initialize the array. Now we say if you are in it zero, actually we need to, we need to say if the instance is equivalent to then we check our uart hold.c. We check if our uart instance is equivalent to uart1. We say if the uart is in net on index 0, then we simply return because we have already in net our uart. And we say equals true if we haven't in net the uart. Then we need to call the initializing function, which is located in uart.c. So we see this mx uart1 in it. We call that in our constructor and that's finished. And then you can replicate this for every instance and have a static bool associated with each uart. You can also use a map, but I would prefer not to. And then we can just call the init function in the constructor. And then if we want to destruct the uart, we just build a function here. Then we simply take check. We say if the instance is equivalent to uart1 and uart is not true, we need to return. Else we set the function as false. Let's just add some lines here so that we can have the center screen. And then we set the init as false. And now we need to call the deinitialization function, which is also located in the UART C. And then we can see a UART MSPI init. This will initialize the UART. And then we can say MSP D init, which deinitializes the UART and apparently not. We have to look at the init function. We look at the declaration of this. And then we can see that we have the UART init and then the mspd init function over here and apparently this is weak that's interesting they don't have a d in it huh okay so it's an override all gpi in it and it disables the clock so if we want to deinitialize the uart we need to call this function so we copy that function and then instead of the init function we call the d init function and we pass it the uart handle pointer and that is our initialization of the uart and deinitialization of the uart then next we need to add the functionality to write to the uart so we're going to have a write function. I do not know what the parameters are going to be as of yet. We just create the function prototype over here. Then we can have a look at our uart whole.h file, which we can simply just get from right-clicking and open declaration. Apparently not. Well, we can find it in our uart.c file, and then we can see uart in net. Open the declaration, open declaration, declaration again, and then we have the header file. Then we can look at the outline. Then we can see all the functions over here that we use. Let's skip to the UR transmit. So we have the UR transmit, which returns a whole type def. So our void parameter gets replaced with a all type def. We are using the UART handle, which is contained in our class, so we don't need to pass that. And we have our P data. Uh, we need to send the size of the data we want to send and the timeout. And we're just going to write that. And the timeout I'm going to set as a default to one second, which is forever. Okay, so we have our function here. And we can go back to our UART whole.cpp and we add the parameter list. We can get rid of the timeout and we set our return type. And we just have another look here. Then we need to copy this entire function over to our right in our whole.cpp and this will simply just return whatever our whole transmit sends. So our whole transmit type def is going to be the uart instance, our 
p data is going to be p data that we pass in our size is going to be the size that we pass in and the timeout's going to be the timeout that we pass in okay so now we can build this code but first we need to include the main dot h file so that all the functions are included for us so now we can simply build our project and we have a few errors let's see what they are your base does not name a type will help if i include the uart whole.h uart underscore whole.h we see again what it says okay qualifier uart base not a member of init oh get rid of the static over there it's not defined in the scope so we include the usr.h we can simply find that in our includes folder and then we have a successful build okay now we need to switch to our main.cpp file which already has a few things in it but basically what we're going to do is we are going to transmit a bunch bunch of a's so first we need to instantiate the class uart base and we're just going to call that uart one and we need to pass it in the parameters that we want so we go back to our uart.c file we need to pass it in the instance and we need to pass it in a empty structure that won't go out of scope and then we have our uart instantiated we can delete the switch code since we're not going to be using it the leds i'm going to keep so switches we delete okay so for uart1 we are simply going to send the character a so we're going to have a uint 8 underscore t c equals a and then we are going to use uart1 dot write we should probably include it so hash include uart all dot h and we build now what we need to do is we need to delete our c file we need to delete debug and in our source files we want to delete main.c click ok and then we just sanity check with a build again apparently not what was the issue let's see function call uart1 no matching function call for uart1 uart type def uart handle type def uh, we need to ampersand that to give it the address reference see bold right our data is going to be a reference to c and our size is going to be one because we are only sending one character and we are going to use the default parameter for the timeout which you can see over here is one second and then every time we have sent we are going to say whole underscore delay 250 milliseconds we are going actually let's make that half a second so 500 milliseconds we are going to send a a over and we can compile again great stuff and then we can run the code, set up our debugger, we apply, we click OK, we flash the project quickly, great stuff. Let me see what's Putty doing. Okay, let's debug. Okay, so we're at a main, we init the hole, then we run the code, we see what it's doing, we step into, we step into init. You know what? I never initialized the values. So we need to initialize the private variables before we do anything. So underscore instance is going to be instance constructor. And then uart hole is going to be uart hole. And we add the underscore here and we build. Great. We flash again and still nothing. Okay. We debug again. Okay. Step into, step into, step into, init. Fine. It's fine. Step return. Currently we have init. Okay. We step out. Step and we get with nothing. Okay, step into, step into, just step through until we see what the error is, unlock, and it returns all okay. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so apparently, and now it starts working. Okay, okay, that's absolutely fascinating. Okay, so there's not much to see on the board itself. If I hold down keys, you'll see the LEDs. Maybe you'll see it if I turn off the flashlight. Yep, unfortunately not. Not much to see, but you can see it sending A's at the top left of the screen. Okay, now we need to send and receive data. So what we do is we go back to our STM32 whole C file. Actually, the .h 
file we can see we have the transmit function now we need to implement the read function which is the receive so effectively identical parameters as the write function as you can see here the whole p data size timeout identical so all we just do is we rename this to read and we copy that over and we go to our main.cpp file we just copy that we give it its namespace add our braces remove the timeout copy the receive function again paste that we simply return it's going to be the underscore all and then pass it in p data size size and the timeout so that is our read function now we do have to have a look at receive functions documentation so unfortunately it does not tell us what needs to be returned if it hasn't received anything since this is a blocking function so what we do is we guess what the return code has to be so what we are going to do is we are going to do a simple echo and we say the read dot uart one and we create a buffer of char and we will receive let's say we can receive up to a maximum of 64 characters and that is going to be initialized to zero and we are going to mem set this anyways to zero to make sure the entire buffer is zero size of c so now the data is going to be c and since c is a pointer we do not need to reference it so we can delete this we input the size so it's going to be up to a maximum of size of c and then we are going to keep the default time out we say i need to double check the whole errors all type devs so timeout if okay so we say if the read is not equals all okay then we just continue so we return to the top of the loop this has to be deleted else if the read is okay we simply write out what we have in our read buffer so c is going to read in for this amount of size if we do not have anything of that amount of size we can actually remove the delay and then we can write c to the back to the uart for the size of c and if we have done a successful write then we clear the memory buffer we should also clear the memory buffer when we continue again with the loop we can quickly program that in okay errors exist memset was not declared in this scope okay so we say I hash include and now i'm gonna kill every c developer three dot h quickly build again okay we are flashed well almost flashed okay now what we can do is we can simply start typing absolutely nothing happens well this is a fun recording session let's make this buffer smaller because it needs to fill up before it actually gives us a read so let's make the size 10 and then we reprogram the stm32 yeah, we try this again and you can see as i type and hopefully you can hear me type you can see it comes through in chunks so i'm pressing ones now and then you'll eventually see a bunch of ones coming through now i'm holding down the key and you can see it come through in chunks and that's not exactly what you want since this is a blocking code so if i change this to one we can program again and then you can see as i press keys now it comes through not in chunks but this opens you up to the possibility that you can miss data that comes in because if this if you do not receive data within a certain amount of time then you will lose that data because we are going if not okay we clear the buffer and we retry again since the receive does not have a state that tells you if we actually have read data out of the uart so to solve this you are going to need to use a interrupt for that and i'm going to either split this into a second video or i'm going to merge this into one video so for now a like share comment and subscribe is always appreciated thank you have a nice day